Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find the difference of two arrays. It's May 2nd and we have an easy question, which is good, but that means you have to brace yourself for tomorrow where we might have a super hard problem, but we'll get there when we get there. For this problem, we are just given two integer arrays, nums1 and nums2. So we want to find the difference between these two arrays. So just taking these two arrays and magnifying them, you can see that we have three elements in each array, but that's not always necessarily going to be the case. Let's say that in the generic case that this array will have n elements, this array will have m elements. Doesn't really matter, they're just variables here. But the difference of these two arrays has a very particular meaning here. Basically, we want to convert this array into a different array where we are going to remove every value in this array that also shows up in the second array. Does one show up in the second array? Nope. Does two show up in the second array? Yep, right over here. So this one is not gonna show up in the result. Three doesn't show up here. So it is gonna be the result. So this basically is our result for nums one. We removed the duplicates from like the other array. What I mean by that is like the value here too has to show up in the other array. It doesn't matter if there are duplicates in this array. The duplicates have to be in the other array. And of course you could do the opposite with this array, remove this two and you have four and six and neither of these values show up in this array. So that is what we're trying to do. How exactly are we going to do it? I mean, we could do it the way I kind of just described, go through each element, look at every other element in the other array. So for this guy, we'd also have to look at three elements. For this guy, we'd also have to do the same thing. So you can see that that's gonna be not good and we'll have to do the same thing for the other array. So this is an overall big O time complexity of N times M. How exactly can we do better? Well, detecting duplicates. We wanna know, does this two show up in this entire array? We have to do an O of M operation to do that. Then when we wanna do the same thing for three, we have to do another O of M operation. Let's take this operation and make it more efficient. How do you do that? Because scanning through an array, we have to look at it value by value. That's why we get big O of M. M is the size of the array. In the worst case, we don't know if two exists until we've looked through every value in the array. How do you speed it up? Using a hash set. If you know what one is, you probably already solved the problem or now you know how to solve it. If you don't, it's basically like an array where it does have a collection of elements, but inserting and removing and even searching for elements, like searching for this two value in this other array would be a constant time operation. So then here, our overall time complexity will be n, not times m, but times one. So big O of n. So I guess you could say it's the size of the first array, but we could have also used the second array as well. And in fact, we will have to, we'll have to iterate through this entire array. And then after that, we'll have to iterate through this entire array. So the overall time complexity is actually going to be n plus m, or probably the max of the these two terms. Space complexity though is also going to be n plus m because we do have to create a hash set for each of these arrays. I didn't really show that, but we do have to build that ourselves and it does take additional space. So now let's code this up. So while this is an easy problem, I think it's easy to make like a naming mistake. So what I'm going to do here is create a nums1 set and a nums2 set. And I'm basically going to take the input parameters nums1, which is the array, and nums2, which is the other array, and converting them into a set, and then I'm naming them this. Now, I also want to convert each of these arrays into a resulting array. So I'm going to call those result1 and result2. They're going to look something like this. And then at the end, we actually want to return an array that looks like this. I guess I didn't really go in depth over what we're trying to do here like the formatting at least, like this is an array, this is an array, and this is the outer array. So we're returning an array of two arrays, which are removing like the duplicates from these two arrays. And now at this point, we just have to do exactly that, go through every element in nums1. Does this element show up in nums2? If it does not, only then will we add it to result1. And actually, I realized that we are doing add here, add is an operation for hash sets, 
which makes me also realize that we actually don't want to use arrays here. So I guess sorry for being a bit misleading, but I guess my question is, can you kind of spot what would be the issue here? Well, first of all, other than the name, result one, this should be not just result, it should be result one. And of course, these two should be sets. But the bug in particular I'm talking about here is if we have duplicates in one of the resulting arrays, which in this problem, we are not allowed to have. This array can't have duplicates and this can't have duplicates. So if we have a nums one that looks something like one, two, three, three, and let's say that three is a unique element, we'll end up having three twice in a single one of these arrays, either result one or result two. But we're not allowed to have duplicates in any of these arrays. So that's kind of the problem. We don't want multiple of these. We just want a single three. So we'll add it to a hash set, which does not contain duplicates. That's another really important property of hash sets. They do not include duplicates. And another important property is that the order of this hash set when we convert it into an array like this in Python, because that's the output uh, data type that they want. So let's convert that and let's convert this one. And over here, actually one thing, I, again, I didn't talk about, sorry about that. If this number is not in the nums to hash set, only then would we want to add this value to result one. So just going through every element in the first array, checking does it already exist in the second one? If not, then add it to the output array. And what we're gonna do is pretty much the exact same thing for the second array, because with this, we're just building result one. We also wanna build result two. Let's do that something like this, where instead of iterating through nums two or nums one, we're gonna do nums two. And instead of checking if this is already in num two, we're gonna check if it's already in nums one. If not, let's add this integer to result two. And that is pretty much the code. Technically, you could put this or this in a helper function, but if I was working with you and I saw you put this in a helper function, I would lose my mind because it's literally three lines of code. There's a lot more overhead with passing in parameters, I think, into a function, so I just would not do it. I think it's stupid to put three lines of code in a helper function in this particular case. If we had to repeat ourselves like 10 times, then maybe I would, but I really don't think it's a big deal though I wouldn't hold it against you either. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.